evening. This is the meeting of August 24, 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, pursuant to the applicable portions of the New Jersey Public Meetings Law, adequate notice of this meeting has been given. This meeting is posted on the bulletin board located in the corridor of this building and published in the newspaper on January 10, 2020. Councilman Bacchion will lead in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Here. Councilwoman Gingrich. Present. Councilman Burns. Here. Councilwoman Gadanyo. Here. Councilman Gross. Here. Council President Buscio. Here. Okay, item 3A, appointment and swearing in of Councilman for Ward 3. I make a motion. We nominate Mike Siglarelli. I make a motion. You second, second it? Roll call. Councilman Bacchione? Yes. Councilwoman Gingrich? Yes. Councilman Burns? Yes. Councilman Godano? Yes. Councilman Gross? Yes. Council President Buscio? Yes. And uh, Mayor Amato, you want to administer the uh, oath of law? Mr. Signorelli, congratulations. <laughs> Sorry about the long hair. I tried to get a haircut this weekend. It didn't work out. Okay, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Michael Figueroa. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I'll support the Constitution of the United States. Support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith. And that I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. And to the governments established. And to the governments established. In the United States. In the United States. And in this state. In this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. That I will. That I will. Faithfully, faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly perform, and justly perform all the duties, all the duties of the office of, of the office of War Three Council, War Three Council, fulfill the unexpired term, fulfill the unexpired term, expiring November third, twenty twenty, expiring November third, twenty twenty, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability, so help me, God. Help me God. Congratulations, Councilman. <laughs> Item number four, discussion by administration. Good evening. Just want to uh, take this opportunity to 
welcome Michael to the council. Um, unless, uh, you know what, let's, uh, Mike, uh, Councilman, would you like to just give a little, uh, give me a little of your background to the people here in the audience? I mean, we all. <laughs> <laughs> You're putting me on the spot. <laughs> introduce yourself. Just introduce yourself. All right. My name is Mike Segrelli. I live in the third ward at the Morgan Holiday City South. Um, is the microphone still on? Okay. Again, my name is Mike Signorelli. I live uh, in the third ward over in Holiday City South. Um, I'm a retired police officer. Um, also worked white collar crime with the uh, task force after that. And um, here I am. You know, uh, the mayor asked me to, to jump in, and um, I said yes. All right. Yes. He, he's a little modest, uh, but uh, he has an excellent resume. He has a little banking background. Uh, he's very involved in the Holiday City Silver Ridge Coalition of Trustees, and he's also president of Holiday City South, who was uh, re recently re-elected. And uh, I just thought Mike would be a great fit. Uh, he has a business background with uh, the banking industry. He has a law enforcement background. And I know Councilman Gross uh, will appreciate that, to have an additional member of the council with a uh, law enforcement background. And uh, he's just he's well respected and well liked in his community. So uh, we welcome you and I look forward to working with you between now and then the election. Then we renominate <laughs> you for another year and go on from here. But welcome aboard. Thank you. Uh, item A is a cancellation of taxes for 100% disabled. There is two on the official, item 20.1 and 20.2. As I make noted uh, every meeting, that this is a state mandate, state doesn't pay. It's a wonderful program that we honor the 100% disabled veterans that they don't pay property taxes. They served our country, they deserve this, uh, they deserve this recognition and not have to pay uh, property taxes. However, it's just another unfunded state mandate. And I make that announcement because uh, you know, if the state's going to start mandating things to us on the local level, then they start need to provide it with local funding for these programs. So that's uh, on the official item uh, 20.1 and 20.2. Through the chair for the mayor. I went to the um, freeholders meeting and brought that up the other day, that with Murphy's uh, $10 billion, whatever he's going to do with it, it's definitely going to trickle down to the towns and the uh, county. And um, I'm concerned that it might come down as an assessment. And if it does come as an assessment, a one-time hit, then our veterans and uh, seniors will not be uh, able to get that, you know, deduction. So um, we really need to uh, keep our eye on that. So I don't know how we send it down. Do you have any idea, uh, John? My, under my understanding is that the uh, debt would be paid back. Uh, thank you. My understanding is that the debt is expected to be paid back by the state through their own budget, but that there was language in there that said, which is I think what you're referring to, that if they find that they can't pay at some point, that then they have the ability to pass that uh, debt or the repayment of it down to the counties who would then have it trickle down, like you said, where the uh, towns would end up paying for it. But As a real estate tax or as a... I don't know, uh, Lauren, I know you read it. I don't think it was specific into how. But yeah, that's the troubling part. As an added assessment, in other words, added onto the county bill itself, and it which would then trickle onto us, be a part of the county's bill. So would it be a tax to the residents yes. or an assessment? Uh, not an assessment, a tax. Through the rent, through the chair, uh, that bill, the 24-25, was a, a bill that they put out there, and they wanted to attach X amount of dollars, I'll say $25 a month for uh, all of the uh, communities like ours, the senior communities or any community, townhouses and all. So that bill was was set up, but there is something in that bill that would allow them to assess money to all of these different communities. And that might affect us coming, coming down the road. We hope not. Right. So again, We're just to be clear, it, but, yeah. two different bills you're both speaking of. The, in the one Councilman Burns brought up was for the borrowing that right. could end up coming down and be an tax on the uh, residents through the property taxes. And the one Councilwoman uh, Gingrich is referring to was another one uh, where the state was going to pass new regulations that also could have put assessments on the homeowners associations. But um, yeah, there's a lot looming out there and a lot of questions. 
think a lot to keep our eye on, as you said. Yes, thank you. And uh, back to our agenda. Item B is authorizing three recreation refunds. Um, two are to individuals, Lu Luis Shalom, which is the payment to a parent for a child that had not been uh, able to participate in a program. And the second one is for $100, that was for $70. Second one is $100 for a refund of a picnic that was uh, reserved but not able to happen. And the last one is for a whole list of people for camp uh, before and after camp and summer camp because uh, summer camp had to be cut short. And uh, so we're refunding, I think it's eight or nine days worth to everyone. And um, I will say everyone was very happy and they were sad that we had to end the program a little early and um, are excited to come back as soon as we reactivate. Those three items are on the agenda official as items 20.3, 20.4, and 20.5. And for C is an award of contract for snow plowing for the 2021-2022 snow seasons. Uh, the first one being to new gen recycling and the second to pristine lawns of New Jersey. Uh, this will now bring us up to four uh, snowplow companies. Uh, hopefully we don't need them. That's on the official agenda for New Gem Recycling. Official is 20.6 in Christine Lawns of New Jersey, 20.7. Item D is authorization for a grant for an electric vehicle and charging station. The municipality uh, through administration recently purchased a small electric vehicle. We feel that it's a good idea to test it out, see how this could work out for a fleet. We've also um, authorized a grant application for an electric bus. It's amazing that they can make the vehicles that big and they carry that much weight also electric these days, but it seems like uh, something that will be good for the future. And in regard to the charging station, the hope is to not only have a charging station here for any electrical vehicles that the township may own and operate, but also one that would be then available to public, as you've seen, I'm sure, in other municipalities and some of the different um, uh, fast food establishments have these uh, charging stations available so that it could be more convenient for other people to have um, electric vehicles as well. That approval is on the, for the two of them, on the official agenda as items 20.8 and 20.9. Item E is just a construction refund for a flood review of $100. Goes to Premier Properties of New Brunswick. It was inadvertently charged and uh, they're at block 1708.211, lot 2.01, and it's on the official agenda as item 20.10. Item 4F is an award of a contract to property registration champions, uh, LLC, to administer the vacant and foreclosed property list. This is to obtain services for a company to provide specialized expertise and services needed to register vacant properties, collection of fees for foreclosure properties. Um, the, the, this, is, this, this company, ProChance, has been going around to a number of municipalities around the state, and it is a fee-based. It doesn't cost the municipality anything. If anything, the municipality will make money on it, uh, as, as, as have other municipalities, with really no expense. Uh, if Mr. Councilman Burns would like to speak on a little bit further. Yeah, through the, um, since Sandy, we still have uh, a lot of vacant homes, homes that haven't been touched. And um, this is going to allow us, and I've talked to uh, Kenny Anderson about this, our code, and he said it would be a, a great help to the uh, code office that uh, they would have the list. And I, I asked uh, Kenny also today, I said, you know, this is a great idea unless somebody gets there and drags their feet. But actually their payment is, you know, by the owners. So they'll be a little more aggressive. It's, that's their uh, income. But uh, I have some photos here under another order of business, but uh, it's really going to help us. And every house that's not completed since Sandy we're losing millions of dollars worth of rateables since Sandy. You know, these houses are closed up. They're uh, two, three bedroom, one bath on a slab. As soon as uh, somebody buys them or they raise them, it becomes a 
three, four bedroom, two bath, and uh, we increased the rate of bowls and increased the look of the neighborhood, but this is going to really help it. Uh, and some of them have turned into some drug houses that they use in and out to kids, but, uh, you know, this is really going to help. I think it's a good program. Well, we could have foreclosures of your properties, but also the property maintenance, which is key. I know another municipality, the Florida Washington, has been using it for a couple of years with great success. Great success. Yeah, but uh, Fred, I noticed the foreclosures, some of the banks really don't care if they sell the place, and sure. they're sitting on them and sitting on them. So the only thing to get to them is in the pocketbook, you know. And exactly. then, you know, these people get out there and find them for uh, property maintenance, and, you know, eventually they're <coughs> going to give up and uh, sell the properties off. And when that happens, we do not lose the taxes. They pay the taxes to date. Good. Thank you. And I'm not sure if you said already that one is on the official is item 20.11. And item G is the introduction of an ordinance. It's a uh, came to us through our fire safety department, and they were concerned that uh, sometimes there's people, whether it's an unattended property or one way or another, not paying attention and having multiple, multiple false alarms where the, there has to be a response every time, but it's because of them either not maintaining the system or not caring about it. So this would institute penalties that after the fifth false alarm, that then penalties could be instituted through the um, fire official. And that introduction is on the official agenda as item number 13. Item H is appointing Class Two Special Law Enforcement Officers Patrick Davis, Michael Mizermandino, Loring Dunton, and Shane Wardell. It's on the official item 20.12. As you know, our Class Two police officers supplement our regular force by doing uh, traffic detail and special events and such. So, uh, something that uh, I'm happy that we have uh, four more uh, individuals that are uh, seeking uh, Class Two status with us here in Berkeley Township. And as I mentioned, it's on, on the agenda. Item 20.12. Item I is a resolution. Um, as you know, in the past, when there has been long-term power outages, uh, myself and Freeholder uh, Director Joe Vicari have been pretty, trying to be nice, pretty critical of the power company's uh, lack of a response. Uh, this past, uh, the August 4th storm caused widespread uh, damage, power outage, more than 150,000 homes uh, throughout the state. Here in Berkeley Township, we had about 9,800 homes at the beginning of the storm. Now, within 48 to 56 hours, uh, all but 200 of those homes were back on. But still, you know, it's still 48 hours, 56 hours and uh, until then. So, you know, obviously we're in the middle of a pandemic, so I'm just going to briefly read this resolution. Uh, whereas power edges went on for days resulting in the loss of food due to spoilage from the loss of power, whereas we cannot expect our residents, especially our senior residents, and those struggling with the financial impacts of COVID-19 to go without any reimbursement for the loss of hundreds of dollars worth of food. Many residents live on fixed incomes or are struggling with the loss of income and cannot afford to replace what they lost. Whereas the impact to the residents of power outages caused, caused was tremendous, and whereas some power companies, PSENG, and I believe Atlantic City uh, Electric are offering uh, reimbursements, by the way, prior to the resolution being drafted. Some power companies are offering a reimbursement program, however, as others do not. JCPNL does not. Uh, whereas all residents should be reimbursed for such loss, and whereas the mayor and the township council joined Freeholder Director McCarry and Little in their efforts to urge Governor M Murphy to requir require reimbursement by all power companies within New Jersey for the loss of food <coughs> items caused by power outages as associated with the tropical storm. So I appreciate uh, the council's uh, indulgence on the resolution. It's on the official item 20.13. Thank you, Mayor. Um, item J is an I'm ordinance sorry. introduction. It's to actually help. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We actually have to remove this one because uh -huh. we received another bid. Oh, okay. So another interested um, property owner. This was a, an ordinance to sell the adjacent property, um, property that's owned by the township, to an adjacent property owner. Uh, we did receive notice from one of the property owners that he was uh, interested in purchasing it, and I did receive more correspondence. So at this point in time, we need to discuss how to move forward, which was, would most likely be a bid, a sealed bid, and then the highest amount um, that comes in is, is who we would sell it to. If I can, through the chair, does, 
do, does, do we have the ability to just move forward with that based on the original authorization yes. to sell it? We don't need any additional action to do that. Not at this point, no. Exactly. So through the chair, is that just two adjacent property owners? Yes. It, it there would. were three, two were interested. Oh, but yes, not two. I thought you meant like TO. Oh. It's, it would only be two adjacent okay. property owners. It's not going to go out to bid to the public. If this really came to, you know, push and shove, would it help if they subdivided the piece and each took half? Could they go that route? Uh, my understanding is in the past, the neighbors have tried to talk about buying it together and then coming forward to move in that direction. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about the food resolution. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> and I apologize. Right. It happened earlier really this morning, okay. so I, I apologize. I was going to say, Lauren, you're going to be writing a lot of checks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, next item on the agenda is a, uh, a resolution that we adopted early on when the state came out with their uh, nearly $1 billion of uh, frozen and re reduced items in the state budget uh, with reference to the senior tax fees program and the homestead uh, rebate program. And this is just a, a resolution directly to the governor, imploring the governor to reinstate the senior tax fees program and homestead rebate program. Whereas the state of New Jersey offers property tax reimbursement for senior citizens called the New Jersey Property Tax Reimbursement Program, also called the Senior Freeze. And whereas the Senior Freeze Program is designated to protect senior citizens from escalating property taxes by locking in a fixed base property tax amount, paying the difference between that's locked in their base year and the amount of the increase when a tax increase is imposed. Whereas the Governor of the State of New Jersey and the Treasury Department propose budgets including significant reductions in the funding in the Senior Freeze Program. And whereas the measure is unnecessary an unfortunate event to our senior citizens who rely on such programs to afford living in the state. And whereas, given the economic uncertainties caused by COVID-19 pandemic, a reduction in financial assistance to the state senior population is unreasonable and unconscionable. And whereas the mayor and township council would like to go on record and implore the governor to fully fund the senior freeze program. And whereas the homestead benefit program and another program that provides property tax relief in the form of a credit to eligible homeowners. And whereas in 2017, 60,906 residents in Ocean County qualified for the program, of which 7,800 of those 60,000 uh, reside in Berkeley Township, and we are the number one township in the state of New Jersey with the most recipients of the Homestead Benefit Program, uh, which, qualified home, which qualified for the Homestead Program, which provided an average of about $200 for the May 1st, second quarter property tax payment. And where, as I mentioned, 8,700 residents qualify for the program, which is the highest in the state. And whereas the state of New Jersey had announced its budget, which is not, does not include this necessary program, one of the programs removed was the homestead uh, rebate. Uh, such actions is untimely and unconscionable given the number of residents affected by COVID-19 resident related layoffs. And furloughs of New Jersey residents will now be unable to make their property tax payments. Whereas the mayor and township council urged Governor Murphy to direct the Treasury to find other sources of funding to balance its budget and fully reinstate the Homestead Program and to provide much needed property tax relief to qualified residents who require such relief, especially during these times of uncertainty. So that is on the official item 20.34. And then just to add on that, we're just going to continue to put the pressure. Um, as you know, the legislature, uh, we just spoke about it, uh, Councilman Burns spoke about it before with uh, Lauren jumping in a little bit about how the state is looking to float about $9.8 billion worth of bonds. You know, if they're going to borrow that kind of money uh, for, ca for current expense, then they should reinstate the Homestead Benefit Program, and they should reinstate the Senior Freeze Program. Uh, we have not mailed out the fourth quarter property tax bills yet, because it is our hope that the state will fund these programs. And if so, then there'll be, as I mentioned, 7,800 uh, happy homeowners, which their fourth their fourth quarter property tax bill will see an average decrease of $200. But we need to continue to keep the pressure on the state. They have their funding mechanism now. Uh, they should be able to fulfill the obligation for this uh, vital program. So I appreciate the council's indulgence, and that's something uh, we need to, to continue to push until we can get the positive out, positive from uh, the governor's office. It's item 20.34 on the official agenda. Item 4L is an amendment to the 2020. Uh, introduced budget. Uh, merely there's a 2000, 
dollar entry, which has to move two thousand from outside the cap to inside the cap. Very minor, uh, and that is on the official agenda number eighteen. Item N is a um, approval for the revisions to the Municipal Alliance 2020 Fiscal Grant. What has happened here is in the past several years, the municipality has received $31,388 uh, per year, per fiscal year. That amount has been cut to um, $11,150.66. Uh, the governor cut that amount down because of the COVID. Uh, this resolution is for the uh, $11,150.66 for the alliance portion, and then there is a, uh, a match of $11,150.67. So the program, in essence, is going from $62,000 to $22,000. And that is on the official agenda, number 20.36. Item 4N is a uh, basically a finance cleanup. Uh, now that we've gone through all of the various different contracts, we just want to make sure that the salary ordinance collectively has all of the minimums and maximums that which match all of the contracts. And that is on the official agenda, number 16. Thank you, Fred. Items O and P, sorry to do this again to the clerks, um, another ordinance introduction that has to be pulled for tonight. And um, both of those were uh, Pretty comprehensive ordinances. One amending uh, allowed for the amendment of the zoning map to make up for, quite frankly, several years of zoning changes. We want to get that right and get the map up to date. And the other one is initiating several um, zoning ordinance changes uh, for going forward. We wanted the, the planner was able to get the um, ordinance together with our attorney, but we did not have it in time to give to the council first what we thought would be sufficient review that you would want. So. We're asking just to pull those two items and put them on for the next meeting so that we can get you all copies of the um, ordinances and have ample time to review before you're asked to introduce them. So that's items O and P. Item Q is the introduction of an ordinance, just a, um, again, administrative bookkeeping going through the administrative code. There were several um, areas where uh, action had been taken, but some of the uh, changes were not made in the appropriate paragraphs to reflect uh, different divisions that became under different departments. So we wanted to get that right and um, add uh, some other information so that then ultimately we can also get the council a new updated table of organization for uh, Berkeley Township because through the years there's been a few changes in which departments are exist which divisions fall under which department. So this is just some cleanup in the ordinance so that we can give you a new table to follow. And that's on the official agenda for an ordinance introduction as item number 12. Letter R is amending uh, resolution 20-273 R, Schedule C, and that's again, sorry to say, another little bookkeeping thing, whereas the, the difference between the resolution and the agreement was actually one, I believe, uh, said 60,000, should have said 70,000. So this just makes that change to uh, mm -hmm. make them match so that the resolution matches the agreement. And that's uh, just another resolution. So that's on the official agenda as item 20.33. Item S on the agenda was a recommendation from Council President Keith Buscio. Uh, early on in the COVID-19 that we authorized uh, use of our uh, Veterans Park outdoor stage area mm -hmm. and all of our uh, basically facilities for local businesses, uh, for religious organizations, because there was prohibit, prohibition on indoor gatherings. That resolution is gonna run out uh, Labor Day. So Council President Bushio, which we support 110%, extends that resolution on a first come, first, basic, first basis through November 30th. And so that's on the official item 20.37. Next uh, item on the agenda is a resolution that was requested by Councilwoman uh, Gingrich, which is imploring Governor Murphy to reinstate in-person voting. Um, whereas the Township of Berkeley requesting legislation requiring in-person voting. And while the intentions behind the vote-by-mail system were clear, many New Jersey residents are fearful, fearful of the potential for fraudulent voting is high. Whereas in-person voting protects the integrity of the election and ensures transparency in the process. Whereas a primarily vote-by-mail process 
undermines the public confidence in a very important process. Whereas the township is aware of registration, confirmation sent to its former residents who are now deceased and if such documents end up in the wrong hands can lead to fraudulent voting. Whereas the best way to ward against such fraudulent practices is to require in-person voting. And whereas the mayor and township council implores the governor to rescind the terms of the vote by mail within the executive order and permit traditional in-person voting to protect against fraud. Um, as previously, there was, I mean, Councilwoman, you want to jump in? Because it was your uh, resolution, and uh, if you want to go on the record. On the voting? Yes. Um, the governor has passed a bill which really is not considered a legal bill, so they are right now uh, in court trying to. Uh, trying to. They are right now in court trying to get this turn, turned over because. Uh, him passing that bill and telling us we can't go vote, that's totally against our constitutional rights. And we, we have a right to go vote the way we want to vote and be recognized. Uh, I had someone that brought uh, a piece of literature that was mailed to a lady who had passed away 20 years ago for voting. And that was at the last council meeting. So using that, uh, we realized there, there are many errors that are going to be made and voting in person that stops it all. So that's all I really have to say. I just hope that we win this battle. Thank you, Councilman. Any, anybody else want to jump on that as well? I think it's it's a fundamental right to vote, uh, to go into that voting machine, press that button, press that cast vote switch. Um, there's there's somebody in the audience here, I'm not going to point, point the individual out, who's been a good primary voting uh, Republican for many, many years, just received a letter last week from the Board of Elections that his, his vote by mail ballot was rejected because the signature didn't match. I mean, this is ridiculous. If you go to the polling place, sign the book, and they don't like the way it looks, then you can provide the poll worker with ID and vote on the machine. I mean, it's, uh, this individual is very, very upset. I mean, uh, let's face facts. I mean, if you can go to, to Walmart, you can go to Lowe's, you can go to Home Depot, you can wait at the Division of Motor Vehicle Lines for six hours. I know Jim uh, Councilman Burns' granddaughter was online for how many hours for her license? 11 p.m. to 8 p.m. To 8 a.m. So that's 8, 9, 10. A lot of hours. That's several hours. If you can do that, wait online, then there's no reason why uh, you can't go into a polling location and uh, cast your vote. So um, I know that the governor is pretty um, adamant about this, but you know, I just think we need to let our voices be heard. And uh, especially this is a very critical election. Uh, not to politicize the election, all elections are important, but this is the election where you're going to get the highest turnout because it is a presidential election. And you're talking uh, the Ocean County uh, Board of Elections, which is a very competent, uh, they're very competent there at the Board of Elections. It took them an additional 14 days to count ballots after election day. And now you're talking, and that's just Republican and Democratic ballots. Now you're going to have uh, the independent and undeclared in addition to the Republicans and the Democrats. You're going to have uh, probably a third more than the ballots that need to be counted. So. It's just uh, it's just something that needs to be done, and we're going to continue to voice, uh, voice our opinion. Through the chair for the mayor. Sure. Um, the county also had to purchase a, a new machine to count the yep. mail-in ballots, three hundred thousand dollars, and they also said the primary cost them an extra eight hundred thousand dollars. Right. So. Yeah, the so costs are astronomical. The costs are the cost of uh, running an election are astronomical, and uh, as Councilwoman Ginger said, I received a f couple phone calls. From individuals that were making follow phone calls, and uh, there were mail there were actual mail in ballots mailed to people's houses that either moved, passed away, or in nursing homes. Now, what's to stop somebody from taking that ballot to fill it out and mail it in? Nothing, nothing. And the there's going to be a limited amount of polling places open anyway with voting machines. So if people show up at the polling places, they're not going to be allowed to vote on the voting machine unless they're handicapped, uh, visually impaired, or disabled they would have to vote a, a, a provisional ballot. And they have to uh, wait to get permission to do that. Right. When they go there, they'll have to right. wait. And then there's concerns about uh, the uh, efficiency of, uh, if there's any postal workers here, I'm not not directed at you, but just the efficiency of the post office, because around election time, you know, not only are they dealing with the regular mail, they're dealing with the political mail, and now they got to deal with certified election mail. So, I mean, they're, it, it's just, it's just, uh, it's going to be a problem. They did. They did mention that they're going to make some additional drop-off boxes around the county. I think the last election they had 
four. Of, they had ten. No, they had five. They had five this time. They're going to have in Ocean County. Yeah. I don't know. They have not said that. They had five drop-off boxes throughout Ocean County. That they're, they're supposed to increase that number. And from what I understand, Beverly, now if you take your vote by mail ballot, you can actually bring it to the polling place, and the board workers will be able to accept it there. So it's just it's just so much extra paperwork, so much extra printing, so much extra cost. Just put the machines in the polling places and let people go vote. So. And uh, that's on the official item 20.38. All right. Uh, okay. Item 5, comments from Mayor. <clears throat> Thank you, Council President Bushio. Members of the Council, we are in the home stretch of the Census 2020. Uh, right now, there are census enumerators uh, going door to door within our communities mm -hmm. to those individuals who have not responded on their census. It's not too late. Uh, there's two, uh, there's three things you can do. You can wait to be visited by an enumerator, or you can go to 2020census.gov, or you can call the eight, 800 number, which is 844-330-2020, or if you still have your original census form, please mail it and uh, send it back. It's, it's very, very important. Um, in 2010, our final numbers were 74.1%. Uh, one of the highest in Ocean County, but still over 25% of our residents in Berkeley Township did not respond uh, to the census. And uh, that, could, uh, that could lead up to a very loss in, in federal aid. Federal aid is based on the census, a lot of federal aid, uh, whether it be community development block grant money, all the grants that we get, a lot of it's based on federal census numbers. Right now, as of 4 o'clock today, our response rate has been 73.6. So 10 years ago, it was 74.1, so we still got work to do. So if, uh, if you haven't registered for the census, please go home and uh, call the 800 number or log in to the uh, 2020census.gov and then or uh, wait for a numerator to visit you. It's very, very important. We really need, uh, we really need everybody to be counted because it really does make a difference in our community. Uh, our uh, Sounds of Summer concert series is underway. We have uh, our final uh, concert, which will be uh, Berkeley Community Pride Day. Our Founders Day, Saturday, September 5th, 3 p.m. Jukebox Legends, uh, 4 o'clock, Grin to a 9, 11, Remember a Ceremony, uh, 5.30, Sounds of the Street, which is a popular doo-wop band, and then at 7.30, 90s Night with music from the 90s, and at the end of the night, fireworks sponsored by by Aqua. Um, so far our concerts have been attended. We have been adhering to the governor's outdoor executive order of 500 outside outdoor gatherings of 500 people or less. Uh, the two concerts that we had at the beach party were well under 500 people. Uh, what we did since we were limited to 500 people now we made it to only residents only. So the majority of the people and a couple non-residents uh, snuck in somehow but we were well below uh, the 500 mark so we didn't mind. Uh, so those are just a couple things that I had to bring up today, uh, Mr. President, and uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Romano. Uh, Councilman Bacchion. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm going to uh, springboard off of the Mayor's comments earlier about the uh, damage caused by these tropical storms. The, um, the impact of tr the last tropical storm led to widespread power outages within the state of New Jersey. And these power outages led to a significant loss to those impacted as well as major inconveniences and even posted a danger to the health of those affected as they lost air conditioning in the middle of July's heat wave. The uh, power lines, uh, if they were underground, would be less, there probably would be less power outages than what we have now. So I'm asking uh, for a, uh, I'm gonna make a motion to this, uh, this council asking for the uh, state legislators to enact legislation that requires power companies to run underground lines for new lines and replace existing lines as they require replacement and repairs. Um, further, it's identified that there are the, uh, the legislator should find funding sources for these power companies to run lines on the ground to ensure ratepayers are not bearing the cost of such endeavors. So I want to make a motion to ask the state legislature to enact this uh, this bill, and uh, looking for a second. I'll second. I'll second it. 
Roll call. Councilman Bacchione. Yes. Councilwoman Gingrich. Yes. Councilman Burns. Yes. Councilman Signorelli. Yes. Councilman Gadagno. Yes. Councilman Gross. Yes. Council President Buscio. Yes. Thank you. The uh, Finance Committee did not meet uh, this month, so I don't have a report, Mr. President, on that. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Bacchio. Councilman Gingrich. Well, I'm very happy that we're being televised. Uh, I know many of the residents like to see the council meetings, and they get a lot of information by watching us. Uh, I found out this week, uh, I found out, I should say, today, that this week on Thursday, we're going to have an additional food bank which will be at 12 o'clock. Uh, it's a part of the crisis give out. So thurs uh, Thursday at 12 o'clock in Holiday City, Berkeley, at 631 Jamaica Boulevard, we will have food being distributed. We have our normal uh, food bank, which is Friday, so I'll have them back to back two days in a row. So Fridays will start at 9.30 in the morning. So if you have anyone that needs any help or needs any food, please come. And we give out quite a bit of stuff, and uh, the mayor's on this program, and it's really, really fantastic. I get a lot of people that are very happy. It, it helps them get through a hard time that we don't even realize, some of us. Um, I also would just like to say, Mike Signorelli, thank you very much for coming on our board. And uh, Ward 3 is going to be very, very happy to have you. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, Councilwoman Gingrich. Councilman Burns. All right, to add what the uh, mayor said, the uh, concerts have really been good. And uh, don't be afraid, there's plenty of room there that you can uh, separate yourself from everybody, but they've been really good. But there's only been uh, maybe a couple hundred uh, people there. But, you know, show up at the next one and there's plenty of room there. Um, it was uh, good this weekend. Not good for me, but good for every restaurant in Berkeley had over an hour wait to get in. So they have a long way to go before they get back to where they were. But with the outside dining, they all did quite well this weekend. But, you know, here we are at the end of the summer. They should have been here all year long. Um, the recreation director has applied for uh, education certification for the uh, rec building and some other buildings because nobody really knows what's going to happen with the uh, schooling or whatever. So. He's jumped ahead of it, um, Mark Dykoff, and uh, he's applied to the state. I think he already got it for the uh, rec building, and now he's doing the building out in uh, Western. You know, in case they go Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, use Wednesday for a clean, you know, he may be able to do a camp or something, you know, uh, for them to do their homework. But uh, that would be really limited. Um, we were... Uh, discussing an ordinance that if uh, <clears throat> you have a bay view or a water view that uh, you couldn't, uh, your neighbor couldn't plant any vegetation that would prohibit your view. So um, I went around some of the waterfront communities, I passed these out, a few of them, and you can see if you're in the backyard here, there's no way you see the bay. And then what happens if there's no vegetation they have boat lifts, so they pick up their pontoon boat, and now you got a 24-foot wall in front of you in the water. In this other house, the guy's just storing boats. This house has been under construction since 2008, and it's uh, not completed yet. And, and here's another house that's been raised, and uh, Ken Anderson, I think they're in court tonight. They've given violations, but... They're adjacent to this home on the bay. The chimney is blocked up with some shims, and it's a mess. This one here, from the other side, they have arborvitaes planted, and this is their boat that's blocking the view from the neighbor. So, you know, this is gonna be a touchy one here with the boat lifts and the vegetation, but, you know, we can't be looking at this for the rest of our lives. And with this new company, I think, uh, you know, it's going to help us move this on. I'm going to pass this down to uh, Angelo now. Um, also, one other thing. I'm trying to start a, uh, it's not really like a neighbor watch, but when you live on the lagoon, you look across and you see maybe 20 homes. 
Well, after this past storm, you know, a lot of the boats had broken loose and there was siding flying around. So what I'm going to do is try two streets and I'll put a card in your box. And if you want to share your uh, phone number and your contact information, your address, we could get maybe like a street or a lagoon registration going. I know the, uh, you know, the town has the neighborhood watch and Berkeley Shores has an organization, but uh, Mr. McGrath is here. I don't know, maybe 50% of them belong to it and they have a, a registration, but between now and the holiday, because now we have storms coming up, people start packing up their houses, and uh, I think it may work. I'll put a uh, thing in each mailbox on a couple streets and try it out and see how it works. I can't put it in the mailbox. Alongside the mailbox, I said. Oh. <laughs> All right, thank you. Let's finish out a good summer here. Thank you. All right, thank you, Councilman Burns. Councilman Guadagno. Thank you, Council President. Um, every time this year in August, uh, right before the kids go back to school, um, I always mention and talk about Mayor Amato's um, uh, school supply drive. Um, being a teacher in town, I like to say how effective this um, school supply drive is. Um, I would say out of 25 students in my class every year, at least three or four don't have a backpack, don't have the necessary school supplies um, that they need to get throughout the day. Um, this program is a huge success in town. Uh, we have a lot of people that donate backpacks, notebooks, uh, pens, pencils, erasers, color markers, glue sticks, crayons, rulers, scissors, the whole, the whole, the whole gamut of everything. Um, and students need it all, and we give it out every year. Um, so I always say this time of year that if you can um, help donate any supplies for any of the students in school that need them, it would be greatly appreciated. You can drop off the school supplies either at the Berkeley Recreation Center, you can drop them over here at Town Hall, or you can drop them off over at the concert series. We have a special area that you can drop them off at too. Um, you know, I, I was at Walmart the other day and, and, and all the school supplies are out and you can get a backpack for, for five to $10. It doesn't have to be the greatest backpack. Um, folders are sometimes 10 cents a piece. Um, you could buy a pack of pencils and crayons for 50 cents uh, a dollar. It's very cheap and, and, and believe me, I see as, as a teacher, and um, I'm sure Councilman Gross uh, can say for his wife too, she's a teacher, that when we pass out these supplies, these kids light up. They're so excited, they're so appreciative, and it means the world to them. Um, you can see the ones, you know, when, they, when, when the students that don't have all the supplies or don't have a backpack when they walk in the first day, uh, they do have a little bit of a, a down to them, you know, and, and when they get a, a supply like this, and we load up the backpacks with all the supplies, folders, pencils, notebooks, it's so much stuff. They actually have too much stuff, you know, it's, 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 but, and they use it all year. And it's so funny, the kids that don't have it actually give it to the other kids that do have it, you know, if they need a pencil or something, they're so generous. So it makes a huge effect. It makes their day better. It makes the school year go better. So if anybody has time to purchase a dollar's worth of something and drop it off, it goes a long way. It really does. And I want to thank the mayor and the Berkeley Recreation for doing this program. It touches a, a, lot, of, a lot of our children that, that need the school supplies. Um, so thank you, Mayor. Um, that's it, Councilman President. Thank you, Councilman Guadagno. Councilman Gross. Uh, Mr. President, I just want to uh, welcome Councilman Figurelli on board. I wish him good luck. And uh, that's all I can. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Signorelli, do you want to say something? <laughs> so you have, you have a report. You're supposed to come prepared. You're supposed to come prepared with a report tonight. Pardon? I said you're supposed to come prepared with a report tonight. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, one, one more thing. Uh, yes. Keith, uh, earlier this year I had mentioned I had mentioned that uh, our uh, under the National Flood Insurance Program, the Community Rating System. When we took office, we were a class seven community, which entitled those residents who live on the water a 15% flood insurance discount. In 2013, we were uh, upgraded to a class six community, which gave everybody on the who has flood insurance a 20% discount. I'm happy to report we got the official plaque from FEMA to the township of Berkeley that the community is undertaking a series of meaningful activities to protect its citizens from losses caused by flooding and has significantly exceeded the requirements for the NFIP participation and effective floodplain management. And it has the seal up there that we're now a class five 
community, which those who require flood insurance will now get a 25% uh, percent discount. So this is just a combination of a lot of hard work from our planner, our engineer, our attorney, updating ordinances with help from our, uh, our good friend, Bill McGrath from the Waterways Commission. But this is the proof is in the pudding that now that those residents who require flood insurance will now get a 25% discount. So I have it here, Beverly, we can hang it up. Uh, all right, thank you, Mayor. I'm out of uh, discussion by the Township Engineer. Uh, thank you, Council President. Uh, item 6A is a street uh, vacation application. John Tillett is the applicant. It's a portion of Chadwick Avenue, Block 1103, Lot 2 block 1104 lot one and we recommended uh, there was no objections to this uh, request for vacation we recommended it in our 1231-19 letter to the mayor and council is there a motion to that? so moved second roll call councilman back yes councilwoman gingrich yes councilman burns yes councilman signorelli Yes. Councilman Godano? Yes. Councilman Gross? Councilman Gross? Okay. Council President Buccio? Yes. Uh, item 6B is a performance bond release for Andros Fairfield and Abergele uh, road paving projects. All the bonded improvements. Abergele. Abergele. <laughs> have been completed. And we recommended this release in our 817 letter to the mayor and council. So on the official item 20.14. Item 6C is a performance bond release for the Paradise Boulevard Mill and uh, Overlay Project. Again, all the bonded improvements have been completed. We recommended this release in our 817-20 letter to the mayor and council. It's on the official item 20.15. Item 60 is a uh, performance bond release for La Donette and Santa Domingo uh, road paving uh, project. Again, all the bonded improvements have been completed. Um, we recommended this our rele release in our 81820 letter to the mayor and council. It's on the official item 20.16. Item 60 is a performance bond release for Pulaski and Santiago road paving. Uh, project again all the bonded improvements have been completed we recommended this uh, release in our 81720 letter to the mayor and the council it's on the agenda item uh, official item 20.35 item 6f is a final change order and a performance guarantee release this is for the 2019 uh, various bulkhead projects the change order is a $9,900 uh, decrease in the contract amount uh, we recommended both the performance guarantee release and the change order approval in our 81820 letter to the mayor and the council. And it's on the, those items are on the official item 20.17 and 20.18. Uh, item 6G is a performance bond release. Uh, Garrett Road was the uh, project. Uh, Mazer Consultant was a consulting from the engineering pool responsible for the project. Uh, they recommended that release in the 8720 letter to the mayor and council. So on the official item 20.19. Uh, item 6H is a change order for Cortland, Harold and DuPont uh, road paving project. The engineer was CME Associates from the engineering pool. Uh, they recommended the change order approval in their 8420 letter to the mayor and council. It's on the official item 20.20 and I believe it is a reduction in the overall project cost. Item 6I is an authorize, authorization to advertise and receive bids for the 2020 Capital Road Project by Abu Drive. Uh, CME mm -hmm. Associates is the engineer from the consulting pool responsible for the project. That's on the official item 20.21. Item 6J is award of contract for 2020 road improvements uh, to Earl Asphalt Company in amount of $580,513.13. Uh, this project was prepared by Nigerian Associates from the engineering um, consultant pool. Uh, they reckon, recommended award of the contract and it's on the official item 
20.22. Item 6K is award of a contract for the 2020 roadway resurfacing reconstruction of Beaumont Court and Shannon Court to Earl Asphalt Company in the amount of $93,513.13. Uh, Van Cleef Associates from the engineering pool is responsible for the project, made the recommendation. It's on the official item 20.39. Thank you, Al. That's all I have, unless there's any questions on those items. Yeah, through the chair for the engineer, how long can they uh, keep performance bond before they have to? Uh, performance bond never expires. You know we have North Bay that uh, there's still some issues there. They're, they're working today. They're, they're working there today? Yes. All right, so then. By next meeting, maybe they could get a release. They should be done. Yes. I know Great. we're working on it. Okay, thank you. Alan? Yes. Uh, on J, you have that list of the roads that are going to be improved. Can I get a copy of the names of the streets? Uh, yes, it's. Uh, I'll read them. It's Boca Raton Street, uh, Gwen Court, La Damiente Street, Marica Baldo Bald Court, I'm sorry, Place, Oaken Gates Drive, Oakham Court. Rio Court, Santa Fe, Santa Fe Court, and Brooks. Okay. Okay. I'll get a list later. <laughs> I can email it to you. <laughs> Thank you. Right there, yes. That's a lot of. Yes. Thank you, Council President. Um, comment discussion by the Township Clerk. Well, that's only one comment. Item A is the 2020-2021 liquor license renewals. Uh, these are the ones that have received and been reviewed by the police department and they recommend approval. Um, they're on the official as items 20.23 through 20.31 as listed. And uh, item B is a firefighter appointment for Joseph M. Vernaccio to the Manitou Park Fire Company. The police department has reviewed and recommend approval. And that's on the official as item 20.32. That's it. Thank you. All right. The uh, the meeting is now open for public comment. I have a, people that signed in. Mike, this looks like your name. It is. Oh. Okay. Oh. And your is your wife Debbie? Okay. And then pe there are people that came with you too. Well, out there. <laughs> Pauline, Pauline, Pauline. <laughs> Does anyone want to call? I have Pauline and Vincent signed signed up here. Vincent, No. You got something to say, Vince? I get some. Okay. All right. Then the next on the sign is you. So this this is your this is your your, your crowd your cheering section, right? Yeah. All right. So the next uh, Mike Tier, Mike Tier. We have your full name and address for the record, please. Michael Tier, Holly Boulevard. I've been voting here for 40 years. Maybe I'm only 30, but 40 years. And I, whenever I go to vote, I used to bring my best personality. Go through, not a problem. Recently, I, I received the notice that my vote wasn't counted because they didn't like my signature. That's a problem for me. Now, there's probably a lot of people receive that letter, but I'm here tonight to voice my concern. So, what do I do? Do I send a tort claims notice letter to the county and the county clerk? Governor? What do you do? So, I'd ask you to make sure they understand that, that this is something that's important and they should come up with a better format. And I think. But I'm willing to go in person to vote. I should be able to do that. What's the what's the issue? The governor goes places where he wants to go. Yeah. Nobody stops him. So I'd appreciate you setting that forward. Thanks. Through the chair, Mr. Tier. Um, I don't know what rank he is now, but he. Uh, runs the ROTC at the high school. And uh, he was with the 101st Airborne Division. Thanks for your service, and you, you know how to vote. <laughs> okay, next on the list, Tom Prosser. Now, 
Now, uh, Dory, Dory, too, Dory Craig. Yes. Could you guys uh, state your full name and address Browser, for the record? 214 Potters Drive, Bayville. Dory Craig, 6 Browning Avenue, Bayville. And once again, we're in front of the board in reference to New Jersey Airport. It's still a disaster. Nothing's being done. Nobody's answering anything. Nobody, our attorney tried to talk to, I believe it was you, the township attorney, in reference to the injunction. And I had advised him that, just I advised as I advised everybody that night, I'm not the attorney that's handling it. So somebody I did, got handed down to somebody else yes. and again got pushed to the wind. So also, Jim, you were mentioning people that were bothered by boats. You know, you showed some pictures. Imagine 500 boats in your backyard. So, and the only problem we have though is that I, sent, I get, handed everybody some paperwork about the zoning ordinances from our attorney that sent out in January that the attorney said that all this property was residential use, non-conforming, landlocked, non-industrial, everything. But we had one problem. Mr. Camera gave this gentleman the, uh, the authority to start using and storing boats there. 500. And yes, Mr. Camera, you gave him that and it's on the emails. So, you know, he's worried about one boat. We have 500 in a backyard. Now we have the gentleman saying he's cleaning up the property, but he's hiding everything, he's burying everything, he's destroying everything, and we call the zoning, we call it construction, every time we call them, they say they don't see anything. He's chipping up trees, there's more erosion, he keeps adding rocks and trying to cover up everything. They're saying soil uh, you know, is gonna be, you know, they, they wanna do help, help him on it, but he still has no permits. So he's just making more of a problem. So, but everybody keeps letting him get away with it. So, and you, you're the one that said he could use the property. You're the one that said he could store the boats there. 500 boats in their backyard, and we have it on email. So how are you able to override construction and zoning while we're trying to save a neighborhood? Through the how chair. do you explain that? Through the chair, if I may? Sir. Yes. I, we, I, I, I've seen you come to these meetings yeah. several times now. Uh, I'm Jim Morris, I'm the director of planning. Yep. And what I can tell you is that we have, um, we've received an application for this applicant to come. And now he wants to put a building up. So it's even better. Well, if, if I could finish. And, yeah. and I, oh, I, know, sorry. I know you're very passionate about this and I understand yep. that. And I want to see everything be done correctly as well. What so, we have to do to correct it, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, is uh -huh. the man has to take everything down, take up all the debris that he put in that he buried there, and start from scratch and do it the right way. That's what has to be done because it's a toxic dump. It's an engineering disaster, and you know, now he's just trying to play cards with you. And now he wants to put a building up. It's just getting worse. It's getting again. Well, like I said to the last meeting, it's getting stupider and stupider. Nobody cares. If, if he I has could, no sir, access. If, if I could, so I, I everything that you're saying, I'm not disagreeing with you. What what I am trying to explain to you is that. There are procedures that we're requiring the applicant to go through. He appeared before the planning board some time ago, and that application now has been restarted and it's going in front of the zoning board. In that application, the original application and the current application, he always proposed a building. He proposed the, the same storage rack. But wasn't he denied about. in 2015? He was never denied. The application was it. never completed. So we, are, we have the uh, legal uh, resources of the township engaged to um, try and resolve the issue from a legal standpoint in terms of how he's using the property currently. He's, go he's going forward with an application before the zoning board. And it's my understanding as of, as of this, e this evening I heard that he's actually under order of Ocean County Soil Conservation District to um, take immediate action to stop the erosion, which you've documented already before. How do you told stop about. the erosion without getting permits? So the applicant has, How do you, so the applicant has an obligation to meet the directives of the Ocean County Soil Conservation District. So once they're brought in, they will provide him direction as to what he needs to do. I'll, he, I will call the soil district tomorrow personally and find out what, what he's under. He confronted me in saying that he's allowed to override all these stop work notices because soils is letting him do whatever he wants. That was his exact words. We if, have it on if video. He is, if he is, and again, he's working every day. Right, every so, day he's working there. And, and sir, I, again, I understand. I'm not. I'm, I'm. All I'm trying to explain to you is that the process is slow, and I apologize for that. 
The right. process should have never happened. It should have never gone this far. And that's why the neighbors are all upset about this. Yeah, because we every time we come here, it's just we're going to try to do this, we're going to try to do that. And nothing's being done. And then we watch him work and work and make money but it's and not prosper that nothing, it's not, that, that, That's the one point I have to disagree with. Something is being done. The, town, the attorney that the, that the town has I make construction. Let me stop you there. I know that if I don't do permits properly, mm -hmm. I'm screwed. Okay. This guy cleared eight acres and put up an eight-acre boat yard, and he's making money. Sir, I'm going to guarantee so, you. Again, he's, so he's in the same, just on the record. He's in the same boat. He's not in the same boat. He is in the same he's boat. a millionaire, he has, and he has carte blanche. Sir. So anyway, he I'll has stop to, He has to follow the same procedures that you have to follow, that any other application has yes, to follow. But he's been cited. He's been given violations. He's been he should be stop cited work. every day. And in addition, he's being cited by Ocean County Soil Conservation District. <clears throat> he has an application before the zoning board. At that time, you'll be able to voice all these concerns as a part of the application. We'll be as that how also. it should be used. But all the soil that he buried there, everything that he buried there, is a problem. It's a problem that's going into the it's wetlands. It's eroding into properties there. Which is why the soil erosion conservation soil, district it has, has been brought in. It's asphalt in it. It's going. It filled in quite a bit of the wetlands already. We were there today again and again. There, but the there other were, thing if you feel that he's filled wetlands, I yeah. strongly urge you to contact the DEP. We contacted the DEP. And I'm going to call the OC soil. In Tom's River. DEP yes. enforcement. Yes, I did. Okay. And they said they handed it to soils because. Okay. And we called So, soils. again, so. Something is so being done. Every, no, every time we call somebody, they say somebody else is but taking care of it. this man is operating. Seven months, eight months now. This man's operating every, an illegal business every day. In a landlocked property. Every day. And it's a mess well, back there. Well, I can't there. speak to that. What this I can is speak what to is the look process. At. This is what we back up to now. We have beautiful woods behind us. And now we got three-story boat racks with junk soil, erosion, trees were buried, I garbage understand. everywhere. He, he, the plastic from the boats are blowing into our yard. He degraded our property value, and he did it all illegally. He's making money. It's great. He's making money. He did money. it all illegally. He's in a landlocked I mean, property, making money. We follow, money. and we get permits for everything. And, uh, and again, no disrespect to you, Jim, but you said you were talking about one boat. We have 500. Right. I always want, I mean, all my life, yeah. I wanted my boat to come in. I wake up one day, I got 500 in my backyard. Yeah. And this is... We're waiting again. Will Terry Brady will be in touch with the attorney again? Because, like I said, you were talking about injunctions. And again, that we hit a roadblock. Our, again. our property value so, is again, definitely degraded. Yeah, again, I, I'm not disagreeing with you in any manner. And the sound is form. terrible. What I'm, what I'm, what I'm trying to explain to you is, the application will be before the zone, before the zoning board of adjustment. If not this month, probably next month. But it will happen. You'll have your opportunity to voice your concerns. Right, but how can you? So you have to voice our concerns on something that was already done. That he is problem. in violation of the ordinance from that perspective. And no, again, no, code enforcement has been out to the site. He's being required to comply with the township's ordinance. And we're going to do everything in our power to do that because that's the and right thing And if you read do. the paperwork that I handed out to everybody with the zoning to, you know, from, the, from our attorney, you'll see that he cannot comply to anything on that property. Anything and he at has all. no there's legal, legal access. I'm not an attorney. But there's legal so, precedence with regards to applications that are pending before the either the exactly, planning or zoning board. You should not so, be allowed to use the property if again he's running a legal, an illegal business. Yeah. So, but he so, has no legal again, access. It's coming in a narrow opening into uh, the middle of see the that, now. You're getting into the merits of the case, and right. we really can't discuss the case. <laughs> But, but with regards to your concerns about use of the property, the violation, and the soil erosion, but please and the read process. the paperwork we sent you. And again, like I said, but you know, don't disrespect to you, but you gave him authorized, you know, authorization to store all his boats there while everything was being done illegally, and that was so disrespectful to these neighbors. Uh, it was just anyway. sad that what you did. And again, we tried to stop him. We sent you paperwork <laughs> from the attorney and showed you the zoning, the ordinance, and everything, and everything with the property setbacks and everything. He's in, we already found out speaking with. The engineer that was there, that he's already over encroached in other people's property. We had, you know, two of the employees tell us that. Yeah, and he told us that they were already on other people's property. He's already so, going on other lots. Yeah, so, I mean, we're trying to, you know, it's just one day after another, it's just another disaster. So, so who was the surveyor that said that? That was uh, the engineer that took, that's working with the, you know, with the owners. So, yeah. you, you I mean. Right on the Oh, uh, he's on Hickory Lane. Hickory Lane. Yes. The he, surveyor or the engineer? The, but they're both. They're doing a demolition. They're planning on demolition. And so, uh, I believe their engineer that's handling the application for the zoning board is Flannery Webb and Hanson. Okay. There's somebody yeah, on Hickory Lane that we were talking to that uh, they're sitting down there. But uh, so, again, 
I was just questioning you if you don't know. I was everything. just questioning you if you don't know who you're talking to. We did. You may I not did. get the right. Yeah, I got no, it written down. She has I just didn't down. bring it with me tonight. Yes. So, I, I, I mean, he showed us the set, setbacks. He showed us, you know, the, the the markers and everything that showed that. Well, you know, so we could th send you all that information. You know, we apologize for not bringing their names, but uh, again, like I said, there was people working here today. Um, after the meeting, if, or if you want, I can I can step aside and give you my contact information okay. so you can reach out. I can be another resource for you if you have any questions, okay. or you want to report something. Um, if you want, if you want, we can reach, help you reach out to the EP. I mean, they're um, perfect because said, so we, we, she's been in contact with everybody. Well, but I know DEP enforcement very well. And, and if you talk to, she'll And I can tell you that if they, they didn't just hand it off to soil erosion, they have to complete their part of the report. They reported it to soil erosion in addition to whatever action they're going to take. Just so we're clear. Well, she has all that You seem as though everyone's just, it, it, the can is not being kicked down the road, I can assure you. And I will call DEP enforcement, who I have very strong I, relationships I'm with. I'm called soil erosion. I don't believe DEP. I thought this gentleman said that DEP handed it off to They just, did. Well, I called back to DEP to ask what's going on. They go, now soil erosion has it. I said, yeah. I well, they it. have it, but DEP also has an obligation if you told them they were filling well. Right? right. And well, I think that's not, what I heard. And plus it's a state, you know, state park, state, okay. you know, wildlife so, refuge. So, so again, but, I, will, I will reach out to DEP enforcement. And um, I'll give you, I don't have a business card on me, but I'll it. give you my yeah, She has all the information, all the paperwork. She's right. you know, got everything documented. Okay. So Thanks we appreciate it. Sorry for being a little loud, but. If I can, just through the chair, I just want to apologize. I certainly never took any actions to be disrespectful to any of the neighbors. I believe you may be referring to that when we sent construction and code out there, as far as uh, the construction work that was going on, they issued violation notices and a stop work order to stop the construction, but we did not, and I did not, also initiate an injunction or any other legal action to stop him from his operation and uh, moving the boats around on the property. You're correct there. And I'm sorry, but I just thought at the time that that was the best way to handle it. When we got the most recent complaint, while this was all going on, I won't reiterate everything, and the applications were put in, and we knew it was going to go in front of the board, I believe, in September. The um, newest complaint about construction or work still going on there, we sent, again, our construction officials and code enforcement out, and their report back to me was that the only work they're doing is work that was generated from a discussion with soil or conservation. I don't know if they uh, wrote them a violation or what they did. They just came back to me and said, what they're doing there is putting up silt fencing and bringing in gravel under the direction of Ocean County Soils to help temporarily stabilize, not to do something that now is legitimized by our zoning or code that was only for temporary stabilization. So we definitely were not going to stop them from doing that kind of uh, uh, remediation type work and that they also reported to me that the boats had essentially all been taken off the property whether or not I didn't drive out and check myself but that status you're right that's the way I left it I said good then we're gonna move forward they'll come in front of the board and the last thing I want to add is when they go in front of that zoning board I know it sounds frustrating when you said oh now we got to go make our argument there we've told everybody else what's going on everything you said about the access to the property, the fact, the fact that the property may not be zoned for that, that is the venue where you will have to make that known. And the fact that they did continue operations after putting up some structures without and clearing land without any authorization, and the fact that subsequent to that they've uh, done the work for soil, uh, Ocean County Soils, none of that legitimizes anything that's there. I know it seems different because when you go to this zoning board meeting, the, the uh, improvement, well, improvement's the wrong word, the changes have already been made to the property, but that does not give them any better standing. Sometimes, I'm not going to talk about this application, but sometimes it gives an applicant worse standing because the board is upset that they've taken certain action. So whether there's other things buried there before they could approve construction on that, they will most likely want to have excavation done and see, and that's if they get over the very first hurdle of having a use permitted there that is not an allowed use. That's why it's going to the board. So. But, but, but I must just say that everything they're attempting to do to stop the erosion and the problem is making it worse. Okay. That's the problem. Everything they're doing is making it worse. And, and, and that's one thing I want to you know, make very clear. 
Thank Everything you. they're doing is making it work. And on that point, I have no expertise, but our planner does, and as he said, he will uh, get in touch with Ocean County Sewers tomorrow and okay. find out that to make it as good as possible until the actual hearing. Thank you. All right, Thanks. next, next, uh, Dom Dominic. Well, we're, we're going in order here, sir. Oh, okay. This is on. He's with us. Cool. Sir, please call. Get, have, please approach the mic. We need your name and address, please, for the record. Yeah. Is still turn yeah. Hello, my name is Bill Yankowski. I'm from uh, Browning Ave, Bagel. And uh, one of the main things I think that we're losing sight of here is that these structures are dangerous. They haven't been inspected. Which go to, there's no permits or anything like that. Now we got a bunch of kids running around here. Here's the worst thing that could happen. What, what are we going to do when there's a, an injury, a fatality? Are we going to wake up then and say, geez, we should have did something? I think we're losing sight of that. And what you go, we're just losing track of what the hell's going on. That's, it, it's a sad situation. What you go, one kid gets hurt over there, what, what are we going to do? We like down Hickory? That's crazy. There's no. There, is there any fence? There's no fencing across the back, right? Pardon me? No fencing. No, there's no fencing, no protection. So anybody can walk any, in from any point? Anybody can walk in there, okay. right? But just, there's, there's electricity, there's everything going on there. I mean, sure. somebody get killed over there. Just yeah. doctors, equipment, everything. Right. Just so you know, there's a stop work order for any construction. So they're not going to put the fence up yet until they go in front of them. Every stop work, they'll just say keep working. Yeah, yeah they work anyway. Yeah. So I mean, they, this is just a bunch of BS here. Okay, next, uh, Dominic Figaro. Dominic. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Sorry, I don't want to. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dominic Figaro. And I uh, attend these meetings every month. I'm so sorry I missed last month. I, uh, I happened to just fall asleep right before the meeting, and uh, I apologize for that. I appreciate you bringing interpreters in for, um, to interpret for me. So I live at 20 Capri Court in Toms River, which is in the Holiday City uh, area, which is a beautiful area, I have to say. I really do enjoy living there. But I do have some fears walking at night. You see, I have this vest that I always have on if it's past uh, sundown. But there are still many cars that drive by and do not pay attention to you know, me being out or any pedestrians. So that's one of my concerns. I also am hoping that there's a way to set up a, uh, a radar um, check for the speed limit because that's often not adhered to. And I'm wondering, uh, I'm wondering why that's not, ah, the speed limit used to be 25 miles per hour and now it's been raised to 30 and I'm wondering why that's been done. There was never notified of any of the residents. Uh, is there an answer to that? Um, is that the Bananier yes. speed limit? Yes, that's the one, correct. Also, I feel bad for a lot of people. Is, he thinks that someone's talking. Is anyone? Yeah. I think he's getting the. Okay, great. So uh, another one of my concerns is I often see animals injured at night by the cars. Yeah. If there could be some kind of a sign place in the street, you know, watch out for animals or deer crossing. Do you know what I mean, what I mean by that? I think that could be very beneficial. You know, I love animals. I really do. They're very sweet. I, I don't want to see them, them injured. Uh, there's one more point I had. There has been some pretty bad weather for the past year or so, such that in the entire
there's been uh, such in the entire high, Holiday City area, such that, that there's been um, you know really bad flooding in the area and and a lot of damage strewn across the, the neighborhood. How would you, it, um, upon finishing one of these these storms or something like that, what would you do in order to get these um, things cleaned up around the neighborhood? Do you all understand what I mean? Is, was that clear? Yeah, you're talking about uh, you're talking about the brush and the tree branches along the roadways. Exactly. So, you know, there are. Okay, so uh, what he's saying is that there are many people who need priority services, such as those in wheelchairs or those who have, you know, um, Severe things in their lives that do not allow them to clean up their area to be able to leave the house, say if they had a doctor's appointment or something of that nature. Um, so, is there some type of way to make sure that those people are taken care of as a priority rather than the less left to be cleaned up? Yeah. Yeah, you want to say that? Yeah. Yes. In regard to that, I just want to say I believe the police department keeps a list and people can be added to that list anybody who knows that they have a special need in their household um the police want to be aware of those households and chief will add on if i'm wrong or add to it but yes every year when we send out the um, sanitation calendar there's a form in there for any sort of special needs you'll fill out that form you'll go into a registry within our uh, oem and that way we'll know who is special needs who's oxygen dependent who needs electricity we submit that through JCPNL. JCPNL needs a doctor's note each year to confirm that you're on that list. Okay, great, great. And the second part of, or the first part of your question, you asked about the increased speed. We did a, um, a speed study, and the 85 percentile of the speed on Bananier was 33 miles an hour. So that increased. Is that right? 33, 33 miles per hour, which increased the speed limit from 25 to 30. Now, keep in mind, this was requested from the association. That's why the speed study was done. And there are a couple things that go in conjunction with the speed stump study. It's the how many crashes are on that road along with how many vehicles travel that road, along with the width of the road. So it met all the criteria to increase the speed. And that was done in November of 2019. Okay, great, thanks for that explanation. Uh, is there a way to have the um, speed limit posted on the street, maybe painted on the side of the street. A lot of people don't pay attention to these speed limit signs. Like this. Maybe they'll It'll be, be able to see it better if it's on the road. John, you make that request to see. Yes. And the radar sign, Chief? He wants radar enforcement. Yeah. 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 As far as the radar enforcement, and I'll request the traffic officers that are assigned to specifically to uh, do traffic enforcement, make that area a priority. Okay, great. Uh, there was one other thing. So I have seen, uh, I watch this from the TV, you know, and it's, it's great that you have that camera. But you know that I can't hear. We really need closed captions to be able to understand what's going on at these meetings. Uh, so, you know, I, I do look around. It's nice to get to see everyone. But I would like to understand, you know, what's happening at the meetings. So that's why I do come because I can request an interpreter. Um, you know, I, I do love supporting the community and, and being a part of these meetings. Um, and I think it's great uh, that we do have the camera, but we, we it'd be great to have uh, closed captions as well. We, we will definitely look into that. Yeah. 
Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night for all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, last on our list here, Gary DeRosa. Is there? He, he, Oh, is that part of your welcome group? Is that part of your group? <laughs> no, well, welcome, Gary. <laughs> All right. Anyone else like to come up for public comment? Motion to close? Second. Is there a motion? Motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Resolution number 20-204-R regarding closed session. Whereas we are about to discuss matters which deal with one or more of the statutory exceptions under the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Act, which allows the exclusion of the public during said discussion, and whereas the matters to be discussed relate to personnel and contractual. Whereas this may be disclosed to the public at a time when the necessity for confidentiality no longer exists or within six months or less from the date hereof. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Township Council of the Township of Berkeley County of Ocean State of New Jersey as follows. One, that the Township Council shall retire into executive session where the public shall be excluded and where said matters shall be disclosed, discussed, and formal action may be taken with regard thereto. Two, that the minutes of this executive session shall be closed from the public. The inspection shall so remain until the reason for confidentiality ceases to exist or upon formal action by the Township Council at an official meeting within six months or less. Three, that at the termination of said executive session, the meeting would be adjourned. Is there a motion to approve? Second. Roll call. Councilman Bacchione? Yes. Councilwoman Gingrich? Yes. Councilman Burns? Yes. Councilman Signorelli? Yes. Councilman Godano? Yes. Councilman Gross? Yes. Council President Buccio? Yes. 